Great. So uh, thanks everybody for um, inviting um, me uh, to, to this talk. The, the title of my talk is uh, MaxSec SAI Implementation on Sonic. And uh, if you don't know what that is, uh, I will uh, I'll explain as we go. Uh, my name is uh, Sandeep Shah. I am in the marketing group at Credo Semiconductor. Uh, we make uh, devices, uh, semiconductor solutions uh, for lots of different uh, types of products, read timers, gearboxes, MaxSec. Uh, we make uh, uh, a lot of other things that you can actually see on our, on our website. Uh, so for this talk, uh, again, I know it was uh, 20 minutes, so I try to keep it high level and uh, you know really just give you a flavor of uh, what is going on in the uh, SAI world and MaxSec. So I'm gonna, I want to just start by talking about the different types of uh, security solutions uh, that are being used in hyperscale data networks. Uh, historically, uh, encryption and decryption was actually uh, done at layer three using IPsec. So IPsec is an uh, IETF standard, uh, really that works at the IP layer, IPv4, IPv6. Uh, more recently, in the last few years, um, a lot of the encryption has moved to layer two, MaxSec. And one of the reasons why um, they've moved to using MaxSec instead of IPsec is really the, the complexity of IPsec at layer three and the simplicity of MaxSec at layer two. So if I were to kind of just show you uh, the, the different kind of packet transforms that happen, uh, you can see that in the, in the MaxSec world, uh, it's fairly straightforward. You insert a security tag and um, you, know, you, you do some encryption and authentication you know, across the packet, you insert a, um, a ICB. But in IPsec, uh, the transforms are a lot more complex and there are a lot of different uh, things that can happen in IC, IPsec. So if you kind of look at this, the history of hardware devices um, that were doing IPsec, they topped out at you know 40 gigabit, 100 gigabit per second was the fastest channel throughput that IPsec devices were able to do. Uh, today's MaxSec devices can easily do 400 gig, 800 gig you know, in, in, in one device. So there was a pretty big uh, quantum leap in the performance you can get uh, doing MaxSec in hardware versus IPsec in hardware. Okay, so that's a lot of the motivation behind um, you know, why people are using MaxSec today. Um, so so let, me, let me talk about SAI and then I'll talk about the MaxSec uh, implementation of the SAI. So SAI is, is basically stands for Switch Abstraction Interface. It was a, a project uh, that actually started um, many years ago, about five years ago. And the objective was to have uh, an API uh, that could be used by many um, Linux-based operating systems, hyperscale operating systems that would uh, not necessitate the need to use a particular vendor's SDK. And so, you know, people didn't want to get locked into a particular vendor's SDK. So they came up, came up with this SAI uh, switch extraction interface that's been used uh, now for, uh, you know, switches and uh, a lot of networking hardware. Uh, in 2019, uh, this effort was extended to include uh, MaxSec as well as external FIs, uh, read timers and gearboxes. And so here's kind of a picture from uh, one of the, the last in-person work groups um, toward the end of 2019. And this, this group you know, had, uh, was really hosted by uh, Facebook and Microsoft, uh, was actually in a Facebook uh, location. Uh, and there were several other companies that participated in this. Uh, I've listed some of them here, you know, uh, Arista, Dell, Broadcom, Credo, where I'm from. And, and there were some others, some ODMs and, and, so, and some other companies. Uh, but basically the objective was to extend this API uh, that, so it could be used for MaxSec as well as external FIs by uh, the operating systems of the companies that were present. So Sonic, uh, you know, is uh, used by Microsoft, uh, FBOSS by Facebook, uh, Arista uses EOS, uh, Dell used OS X. And so all the participants, you know, were, were, were ensuring that whatever we define will work in all of these OSs you know, using C-based APIs. Uh, so you know, to, to kind of get into why, why would we do that? Uh, so really the, some of the benefits uh, of, of SAI are, uh, you know, for one, and the most important, you're, you're abstracting away from a 
particular vendor's SDK. So uh, all the hardware is controlled at the network operating system level, and you know we, you guarantee interoperability by having a standard API. And also, you know, the main one of the main objectives is to not lo get locked into any particular vendor's uh, API, because uh, once you get locked in, it's really hard to uh, switch hardware. Uh, so at the high level, and I'm going to get deeper into the SAI object model, you know, at, at a very high level, uh, you have uh, uh, an egress path. So that's the system side or the switch side uh, to the line side, uh, which is, you know, the op op optical module or the cable. And so left to right is egress. And then so you have an encryption function that's going on as you go from the system side to the line side. And uh, in the other direction, you're basically... Uh, decrypting uh, packets uh, as they go from the line side to the system side. So that's kind of the very high level and the object model was defined, you know, such that a device could actually have several uh, chips or die inside. And so this is the very high level uh, view of, uh, you know, of the object model. Uh, kind of getting one level deeper, um, and this is kind of the, the heart of uh, the SAI object model. So at the very left, you have the classification function. So a packet comes in and it goes through some kind of classification uh, using an ACL access control list table. Uh, then once the packet is classified, uh, it would go, uh, it would, there would be basically uh, different actions that can happen. Uh, the packet could be denied. Uh, hey, they didn't meet uh, the security criteria. It could be forwarded without any encryption or the third and most uh, you know, important and, and complex uh, transformation is actually doing the security flow. Uh, and and I'll, I'll walk through uh, kind of the different cases here. Um, okay, in the, in the very simplest case, uh, a packet comes in and the ACL table will look at uh, the packet fields that are relevant to what's programmed. So it could be the MAC address, uh, it could be a MAC type, ether type. Uh, you know, it, it, you can look at several different uh, parts of the packet in the ACL table and come up with uh, the action. In this case, I'm just showing the simplest action, saying the ACL table, uh, you know, basically said that I need to deny this flow. And so the packet is dropped basically at the classification uh, stage. Uh, the next um, possible thing that can happen is, is basically um, uh, the packet is forwarded unencrypted. So an ACL table would, would basically say, um, hey, uh, I recognize this flow. I don't want to encrypt it. I want to forward it unencrypted. And so that is you know, what the red, uh, red bars are, are, are showing here. And the third uh, type of uh, action that can happen is, OK, uh, that hit it matched ACL tables, and the ACL table now will point to a security association uh, that says, okay, I, I need to uh, do a packet transform that does this kind of encryption. Um, and the, the transformation portion uh, of, of, uh, of the packet processing will, will, will then do a few more lookups. Uh, so in this case, uh, the ACL entry will point to uh, a secure flow showed in the green, and the secure flow uh, basically can point to uh, you know secure channels which have inside them security associations. And so there's a whole uh, kind of hierarchical thing that that happens in the encryption and decryption processing, and uh, uh, basically it goes through you know different types of lookups uh, that that will define uh, the kind of security processing that's going to happen. Uh, so if, for example, inside a security association, uh, you know, we'll have uh, different fields. Uh, there's something called the sec tag, security tag dot an, and the an is an association number, a two bit association number that will uh, you know, uh, point to one of four uh, security associations, you know, et cetera. Um, uh, so th this is kind of the, the, the transform that's defined. Now there's a whole lot of code that is, you know, behind all this. Uh, there's there's uh, you know SAI code that that corresponds to programming the ACL tables and the classification portion. There's a lot of code that uh, that um, you know defines the the different 
keys that are being used, the different security associations. Uh, and so, uh, uh, you know, for, uh, for, you know, in 20 minutes, it's actually diff difficult to actually uh, walk through code. So I'm just, uh, you know, walking through the architecture, you know, of the, of the SAI. Uh, what is the status, you know, of this today? Uh, today, uh, this is running on actually several operating systems. Uh, it's uh, uh, you know supported on Sonic, on FBOS, on EOS. Uh, I haven't seen the OS 10 uh, implementation yet. I have seen the Sonic, FBOS, and EOS implementation so far. Uh, Credo uh, you know has has made a, a release of our SAI MaxSec implementation on a GitHub. Right now, it's a private share. Just uh, um, you know, that can be downloaded by people that are using, uh, you know, our implementation. Uh, we've given access to a lot of different uh, end users, companies that are that are basically building platforms that are running MaxSec. Uh, and today, the the port speeds that are uh, being run are 100 gig uh, ports, 200 gig, and 400 gig. Uh, I think next year there'll be 800 gig solutions. But right now, uh, there are uh, 100, 200, and 400 gig. Um, and there are also a lot of you know future things that are uh, potentially being being added. Uh, for example, uh, feedback from current users is that hey, you know, SAI didn't define this, or it defined uh, only one um, you know association number. If I get more than one, then it will overwrite the record instead of you know supporting uh, you know four records. So there are a lot of things that are being um, being done today in the SAI community. And, uh, you know, it, it is still pretty early. If you want to look at, uh, you know, where the definitions are, I'll put the links in here of, you know, the, the full SAI, you know, uh, open computing project, and then a specific link to the current SAI definition, you know, 1.4, uh, where, where it is on GitHub. It's actually managed by someone at Arista. Uh, but it, again, this doc is open uh, to anyone and all of the the companies that that participated in the SAI extension, you know, have access to it, and and actually, it's, these are now you know public documents. Um, so, you know, having said that, uh, you know, if you are interested and not already participating in the SAI uh, extensions for MacSec or Retimer or Gearboxes, uh, you know, you can contact me and or contact any of the. Uh, the different companies that are working on SAI, and you know, we would love to, you know, see a lot more you know, people getting getting involved into this. Uh, so let me just get uh, the participants. Let's see, list of participants. Yeah. Um, you know, I expected that people may be, you know, asking questions, and so uh, I kind of reserved a little bit of time for questions. I guess I could have put some code examples in here. Uh, I had five more <laughs> you can pull the code up too. But there is one question. Okay. Sure. Um, how IPsec is going to converge with MacSec in terms of SI definition? What parts can be shared and reused? Okay. Uh, actually, great, great question. So uh, IPsec actually, uh, there, there, there are certain modes of IPsec. Uh, called tunnel mode ESP encapsulation decapsulation that share the same uh, crypto uh, algorithms as as MaxSec, uh, and so I already have seen. Uh, you know, I, I reached out to a, a lot of the people that are working on the SAI, the different companies, uh, you know, Arista, Facebook, uh, Microsoft, and just say, hey, uh, what what extensions do you see that are coming? Uh, that do you see coming to this? And one of the feedback, at least, or one or more than one, basically they said, yeah, we would like to extend this API to cover IPsec uh, in addition to MacSec, uh, and so that is that is something that is definitely possible uh, and and already happening. Um, today. Yeah. Okay. The next question, what device vendor and model is working right now? Um, so uh, I can speak just for the Credo devices. So Credo has a, 
a 1x400 gig uh, called OWL400 and a 2x400 gig uh, that's called OWL800. Uh, there are some YouTube videos, for example, um, that uh, that show uh, interoperability on you know Innovium Terralink 7, uh, and so we've done MaxSec uh, you know open open demos with uh, Innovium's 12.8T uh, uh, switch. Uh, there are also um, you know platforms that use these Credo devices um, you know from from several OEMs as well as white boxes that are that are using uh, SAI already. Um, I mean the the uh, the email list for the for the SAI um, kind of uh, you know credo software team, uh, you know we, we see stuff support requests every day, um, and and I know the 400 gig and the 800 gig uh, devices from credo are are using this already. Um, uh, there 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 are other vendors that probably you know have. Uh, SAI base code, uh, you know, Broadcom was was uh, was a company that uh, uh, was also involved in all of these definitions. So, if I just list the companies that are, oh, sorry, uh, yeah. So, um, you know, any of the chip companies uh, that that worked in um, the SAI extensions group likely have solutions. You know, I can only speak for the Credo ones. Um, but yeah, the, there are platforms. Uh, typically, uh, they they'll be um, you know used in the, uh, the Facebook, Microsoft type networks today. What's the power requirement for these devices? This is a question on the chat. Okay. Um, typically, uh, you know, in, in in today's technology, uh, I, I think it's something like. Uh, Let's see, a 400 gig port will, will take something like uh, um, um, something in the probably the 10 watt range uh, per, per 400 gig is, is today's uh, power power profile for these MaxSec chips. Uh, you know, by next year, there'll be ha half of that. So, so today the, the MaxSec devices are, are typically, you know, put inside the switch or the router on a, you know, on the line card. Um, you know, I've seen use case uh, discussions of actually putting these uh, type of MaxSec devices um, inside cables. So that's another application if you want to have a, a secure uh, system via a cable. Uh, that is also probably kind of a, a near-term future thing that that is happening as the power uh, starts fitting into the QSFP DD and OSFP uh, envelopes. Yeah. yeah, I mean they said don't be commercial in my presentation, so I didn't really put anything about Credo, um, okay. but uh, you know, uh, we, we, yeah, we make um, you know uh, we have a fairly large market share of. Uh, uh, of, of MaxSec devices today. Okay, so there is an adoption question from my MaxSec. So many customers readily accept IPsec. Um, what about MaxSec? Will be will it be hard to get customers to accept it? Uh, you know the 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 performance limitations of the previous IPsec solutions really, I think, forced a lot of uh, uh, the hyperscale data centers to be. Uh, you know, particularly for the fast ports. So the 100 gig, 400 gig ports that need wire speed, encryption, decryption, you know, for a lot of uh, you know, security applications, government applications, um, they would, you know, they, they, they would, um, they would probably opt for MaxSec uh, because the IPsec uh, solutions today just cannot reach uh, those speeds at, at any reasonable uh, hardware or power level, so. Yeah. What's interesting, though, is these same solutions will support IPsec in the in the near future. So, uh, you know, you will have an option to use the MaxSec chips for MaxSec or IPsec. Interesting. So there's another question. What service speeds are supported? OK, good, good questions. Uh, so today, uh, the, the production products are basically 56 gig uh, per lane 30s, uh, which is really what uh, you know, the Tomahawk 3, the Novium 
Felix 7, uh, Barefoot, Tofino 2, all of the switches out there today, uh, you know, uh, are, are basically the production switches are supporting 56 gig SERDES, and that is what the MAXEC chips also support. Um, you know, next year, uh, as more and more uh, switch speeds move to 100 gig per lane, uh, the MAXEC speeds will also follow um, th those same switch speeds. There is another one. Okay, IPsec um, is end to end and change. MaxSec is point to point. Mm -hmm. are, yeah. It's on chat. Okay, Where I'm trying to figure out how to open the chat. Uh, sorry, okay. Um, Do you see the Zoom chat? Uh, because I'm in the... full screen mode, I can't yeah. see the Zoom chat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. if, if you it's exit up to you. The, exit the full screen mode, you can see it. Okay, let me do that. Okay. Uh, uh -huh. Because I'm sharing, maybe I can't see it either. So, no, so anyway, I can, uh, okay, I can please. read it out if you want. Please, yeah, please. Yeah. yeah. So IPsec is end to end and MaxSec is point to point. So mm -hmm. if in bit switch router, how can MaxSec know the IPsec info? Otherwise, IPsec security would have been violated at the first place. Okay, yeah, good. Yeah, yeah in the same context. Okay, maybe you can, there's a second part yeah. question, right? but yeah. Okay, yeah, so uh, what, what I meant to say was you can use these devices in MaxSec mode or IPsec mode. They're, they're not really uh, mixed in a particular session. So uh, from a hardware perspective, uh, the, the same, uh, functions that are defined here uh, in terms of classification, uh, packet transformation. What would happen in the classification block is when you're, you're working at the MACSEC level, the security flows would all basically be uh, talking about the MACSEC uh, encryption, decryption. Um, if you're doing this with IPSEC, again, uh, the, the SAI uh, model is not there it has not been defined for IPsec. So it is all still kind of hypothetical and futures, but uh, the way it would work is it would either be, you know, full IPsec or full MacSec. Uh, I don't see that, uh, you know, you're, you're gonna be mixing, mixing mixing the modes. So one of them is the point to point as uh, the person clearly remarked and the other one isn't, you know, end to end. end, to end. And, and so the, the same crypto functions um, and the same hardware, the fast path packet processing, you know, can be used, but the whole... Um, um, yeah, even the control plane, right? It's going exactly, to the whole control plane will be, will be different. Uh, it'll be, you know, uh, one for MaxSec and a different for IPsec. Yeah, and the follow-up question there is the same thing related. Um, what do you mean by API for IPsec? Uh, did you mean only at the end devices? I think you did, just to clarify. Yeah, so uh, API, it, it would be an extension to the current MaxSec model to cover uh, things for IPsec. And, and they're not there now. Right now, the API is fairly simple and only really only defines MaxSec. So it would be a fairly big uh, increase um, you know, of, of, of API calls to support IPsec. And that's the SAI API, you mean? Right? That's the SAI API, yeah, the switch abstraction interface. So, uh, you know, SAI is defined for switches. And what I'm talking about is just the extensions for, for MACSEC. And so there would be another set of extensions for IPSEC. For IPSEC, yeah. And IPSEC has its own control plane API, which is different. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, there is a lot of activity going on. Go, go ahead. ahead. No, I was just saying that's the end of the questions on the chat, but go ahead. Okay. No, I was just saying there is a lot of activity going on. Uh, and, you know, uh, more and more you'll start seeing, uh, you know, much more open, uh, you know, open disclosures of what products, uh, what networks, what, uh, you know, um, um, you know, how this MaxSec SCI is being used, uh, it is still pretty early. And so for the people that are, you know, wanting to get in and, and start doing this, uh, th th there's a lot of, lot of opportunity. Uh, you know, and I'm seeing on a very regular basis that, oh, the SAI, you know, doesn't define, you know, uh, 
this. It doesn't define this. And so there, there are a lot of extensions, you know, going from 1.4 uh, current implementation, uh, current definition to 1.5. Uh, there's an opportunity for a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of uh, neat growth to, to happen uh, even before they start getting into adding IPsec API. Yeah. So what control plane have you guys used in your deployments? So we, you know, we we are a semiconductor company, and so the control plane is really defined by uh, you know, our customers. And so, uh, whatever is you know is available in Sonic, whatever control plane for Maxic is used in Sonic, uh, will work with this. So you you can look at it as a um, you know. Uh, um, a layer you, below that, right? This is the data plane mostly. This is the data plane. So you, you could do something completely in software. So there are Red Hat implementations basically, you know, for MaxSec uh, that, that are 100% software. And, and so you, you can just replace, uh, you know, the data plane that's being done on, you know, an x86 or a different kind of processor and run it on hardware, you know, get a hundred X speed up or a thousand X speed up. Uh, the control plane is the same, but now the packet processing will, will now be wire speed for any packet size. The, the nice thing about doing this in hardware is that uh, you can, you know, guarantee uh, by design that, yeah, for 64 byte packets, 100 byte packets, you know, 1K byte packets, 32K byte packets, um, the, the hardware will be wire speed and will uh, you know take care of the wire speed uh, functions uh, that in software would be very you know very non-deterministic uh, so the performance of a 1k packet uh, versus 64 byte pack, 64 byte packet in software is very non-deterministic but in a um, you know doing this kind of hardware you know credo hardware uh, it is all wire speed for any packet size there is another Another question, not a, somebody is having uh, trouble writing on the chat. So, okay. Eddie, uh, from NVIDIA. Um, so, how's what's the activity on uh, MaxSec over VXLAN in the Psi groups, or is that going on? Good question. Yeah. So there is no uh, VXLAN defined for SAI uh, right now. You know, only VLAN. You know, the traditional VLANs are are defined. Uh, it's it's really by the 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 you know what's in the spec. So you know, VLANs are already defined, but not VXLAN. And so there are a lot of uh, there's a lot of activity. Uh, it's not in the SAI community yet, but I know uh, Liwa from. Uh, for Microsoft and TN from Facebook and you know they're they're involved in a lot of definitions of you know how do you um, use VXLAN in, in, in a secure environment but they haven't hit the SAI uh, API yet when, once they do you know they'll be implemented yeah what about hardware though when for your hardware at Credo are you guys considering yes uh, so there uh, good question. There, there's a lot of hardware features inside our devices. Uh, SAI only exposes, you know, uh, a very small part of it. Uh, there are a lot of hardware uh, extensions to support a lot of things that are uh, not yet standard. So IPsec and MaxSec are standard, but, you know, the Cisco's and Arista's of the world, the Red Hat's of the world, they all have extensions that are, that are beyond these standards. Um, and, and VXLAN, a secure VXLAN is, is one of those that is uh, openly discussed. There are proprietary implementations. For example, Cisco calls their, uh, their VXLAN, you know, they call it CloudSec. So you can just type CloudSec Cisco and Cisco, uh, they, they keep their definition uh, completely open. Uh, you can say, you know, Arista, VXLAN and you, you'll find something that Arista does, uh, you know, Red Hat VXLAN, you'll find something. Uh, so those are all kind of uh, extensions de defined by those companies that are that haven't made it to the standards. Once they, you know, make it to the standard, once then you can make a standard API um, that, that basically becomes standard, uh, just, just like what I'm talking about here, uh, SAI API. Okay. Thanks, Sandeep. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Rupa. Yeah.